Welcome in, everybody, and a special welcome to a couple of outstanding guests. We've got Connor Rogers and Trevor Sikama from the NFL Stock Exchange podcast. And for those of you out there that um, enjoy my content, if for some reason you are not enjoying their podcast, their YouTube channel, definitely go check it out as well. Uh, how's it going, guys? Thank you for, for stopping in for a little draft talk. Thanks for having us, man. We're excited. Dude, I'm, I'm super excited for this one. This is going to be a lot of fun. And Marcus, I have to let you know, we're doing a collab mock draft series on our channel right now. And you are consistently one of the people who in the comments, they're like, do something with Marcus. Like they don't say his name franchise guy. So yeah, it's franchise guy. Yeah. yeah so they never it, say Marcus. That's true. They don't, they say <laughs> that, that your brand, uh, your brand is um, strong. Yeah. It's very, very strong, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this because the people have also been telling us that we need to make it happen. So All this right. is going to be a lot of fun. Got to give the people what they want. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a funny deal when I like started to go on webcam and like say, introduce myself as Marcus. Everyone was like, who the hell is Marcus? <laughs> hey, you're just TFG. Um, yeah. And, and, and Connor, especially, I know you're just, uh, taking a break from Aaron Rodgers watch. I'm sure you're just, Oh, it's been great. Yeah. I put it on the back burner for good. Like there was like two <laughs> weeks there where every day I'd have to be home in case something happened. Yeah. And now I'm like, it's, whatever like it's is anyone know, even gonna man. react like crazy mode anymore when i was it goes gonna down? say it's it's the news is gonna break on this show now because you said that great oh, that'd, that'd be awesome i'd love it yeah well i uh i figured we're all a little bit um you know mock drafts are always great but i figured it'd be fun to kind of um mix it up a little bit but keep things in the uh draft format and i did this with renner last week a little bit we're gonna do a little kind of back and forth my guys draft and uh, kind of the idea here is to give us an opportunity to kind of plant our flag a little bit on some guys that were a little bit higher on than consensus maybe we wouldn't want to leave the draft room without this guy uh, and and the competitive you know nature of it is to try and get guys that you know will, will make us have that oh man reaction um, my only rule is I can't take any of the guys I took with Renner so that was Zach oh. Kuntz, Mazi Smith, Deontay Banks, and BJ Ajolari. But okay. if you guys want to take one of those guys, please do, because I think that would be cool to hear your perspective on them. So how do we want to do the draft order here? One of you guys should It's funny should how well the... Tre Trevor and I know each other that like I, I could partially guess some of the guys he's he's brewing up right now, I but I will not. Marcus, you this is your home field, uh, so maybe you want to go last if that's the case. I don't. It's up to you. Are we are we snake drafting? Is that is that are, are we smart enough to handle a three person snake? The draft order. I can think we, we could do it. Yeah. Can we keep that draft. straight? All yeah. right. Yeah. Let's snake draft it. So, how about I'll just I'll just we'll go alphabetically uh, from okay. you two. So Connor, I'm gonna give you the the number one. Trevor, so I'm guessing, I, I swear if you take I swear if you take the guy that I want to take I swear man <laughs> I swear we won't keep my Trevor time. and I just did like a two hour show <laughs> like to, just it's before fresh. this so yeah the, it, it's yeah I'm not gonna do it because it'd just be diabolical to do that to him so let me I, I'm gonna put this out there I don't want to go like super chalk on this I do want to reach at least in the guys that are you know, probably not going in the top 20 just because I love them Marcus I love that you did Ojolari he was somebody I had kind of jotted down because i he's higher on my big board than where people have him i'm ha i've had him at 20 for a long long time and it just appears for the longest time he was just like hey he's a second or third round guy and we've kind of come around on that where he could sneak in around one but i won't go with ojalari since you've done him on a show already um i'll go a little deeper on that and look for a guy that's more probably round three range i have him 67th overall and that's yaya diaby from louisville and it's you know it's fascinating when you watch him because I don't really think they utilized his skill set to its highest potential. He was still somebody that had double digit sacks. Uh, the production is still there. But when you look at how much they moved him around the line of scrimmage, instead of just letting him be a true pin your ears back and go edge, I think that hurt his pass rush production where it was good, but I think it actually could have been great. You look at the testing, he kind of passes every threshold you want. He's over six foot three, he's over 260 pounds, he's got almost 34 inch arms. He's got big hands. The 10-yard split was in the 93rd percentile. The 40-yard was in the 96th percentile. 37-inch vertical. Explosive, explosive athlete. I'm not saying Diaby deserves to be a first-round pick or even necessarily a top 50-ish kind of pick, but if you put him in a attacking 4-3, 
and you kind of simplify it for him early on and say, hey, we're going to put you on the field on passing downs, get upfield. This guy can do that, and he can do it at a pretty high level. Yeah, man. I mean, the, the explosiveness hit with him is it's not just in the Insane. it's yeah, it's not just in the numbers like, man, you can tell like there is something there. I totally agree. It's just such a wild projection with how they used him. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, you got to get I a agree. little bit creative um, with the projection there. But that's a that's a that's a impressive first selection there. Connor. I want to start really yeah. far down the board. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. All right. We talk about the same guys all the time. So now yeah. at the point where I'm like, let's just. Let's get into it. Let's get outside the top. That's exactly what I wanted here. So, so great pick. I purposely did not have VJ Ojolari on my list because I knew like, I figured, <laughs> he was number one for me. I, number one. I didn't even put him on my list because I was like, I can't even do that to Connor because I know that's his guy. So that's funny. You're talking yeah, we, about. we Marcus, needed. Have you heard the story of Trevor finding me at the combine? I, I think I did catch this actually. Um, Tre- Trevor like was wondering where I was, and then he realized BJ Ojolari's podium was going on, and he just went. He didn't even text me. He just went to the podium and stood next to me. <laughs> there he was. He just knew you'd be there. Yeah, there I was. Yeah, we we need Renner on this if we were gonna hype up BJ Ojolari because I think he's he's one that's a little bit lower on him um, when I brought him up. But let's let's pass it off to to Trevor. All right. Well. I'm going to take an obvious one. I know you said you wanted to start further down the list, and I'm glad that you started a little bit further down the list, but uh, I will take the easy one. I am taking Devon Witherspoon from Illinois. Mm. This is truly Panic one of pick. my <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> this is truly I love Witherspoon. one of my favorite prospects that I have watched this entire class. I mean, I'm talking about going back years, and there have been some phenomenal corners that have come back, come through over the years. Shoot. Sauce Garner, what he was able to do last year. I had Derek Stingley even as my number one overall player. That's how impressed I was with him last year. So that just goes to show you how much I've liked some of these corners that they've even recently come through. Devon Witherspoon clicks and closes on wide receivers about as fast as anybody that I've ever seen. I mean, that ability is insane. I feel like he's super fluid. He's very explosive. He will, of course, come up and hit you in the run game if he has a lane to do that. And he often does because his instincts are are so fantastic. He's done such a great job of studying film over the last couple of years. And you can see from his early film, that he's really taken that jump into preparation for anticipation, knowing when screens are coming, knowing when uh, runs to the outside are coming, knowing the tendencies of the wide receivers that he's going up against, how they block, how to beat them, how to get off of it. Like those little things, even beyond the elite coverage that he was able to bring, just totally rounds out his, his profile and what makes him such a fun player to watch. I think everybody points to the Sean Shivers hit where he breaks on the ball faster than even the wide receivers do at the snap. And he's in that guy's chest as the ball arrives. And you just, that's one of the hardest hits you've ever seen from a corner. That's like Lito Shepard, Reggie Bush stuff. What you're, uh, what you're seeing there from Devon Witherspoon. And so the coverage ability is phenomenal. I love his mentality. Uh, he, in man coverage, in press man coverage, he barely gave up anything this past season. And that's, that's talking about a guy who is smaller in size that I know that some people had some concerns about, but he's able to hold his own at the line of scrimmage and in man coverage. And, he is truly just one of my favorite players that I've watched in this entire class. And I knew if he was on the board, I had to take him as my first, my guy. Yeah, dude. It's, it's fun to see your face light up talking about him. Cause I had the same reaction watching him, And he was just one of those guys that for whatever reason I got to a little bit later, um, I just put out my cornerback rankings video this week. So yeah, he was, he was number one and yeah, some of the, like, Let's go. I mean, you brought up the screen and just like, sometimes the way he just anticipates it's like, he had the freaking play call or he knew right. it was coming before. It's like, how did you, how is your reaction time that good, both physically and mentally? It's just, it's insane. So yeah, he's, he's a great pick. Um, that will put me on the clock. Um, you got back to back here. Yeah. A lot of pressure. I'll, I'll go with my top two guys. Okay. I, I'm going to stay in Illinois oh. and take another defensive back, Tavis Martin. Yep. Mm. Uh, I thought he'd go during this. Yeah, uh, definitely a late riser just with the the workout uh, in, 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 in Indianapolis. Let's see, what did he officially put out there? He had 4-4-6-40, four, 1-4-7 four, four, split, which is just stupid. 44-inch vertical jump, 133-inch broad jump. Those Nuts. are all like top of class. And just for good riddance, you know, he put up 15 bench reps at – 194 pounds so like 
this dude's an absolute freak played in, you know, a really great secondary got good coach and going back to Lovey Smith being there with them. And I think he's one of few safeties in this class with like real upside positional flexibility. You can put him definitely in the slot where he played a lot at, at Illinois, but I actually thought he was better when they put him over the top in, in, you know, two shell, or I think he can do even more single high at the next level. I thought he showed the instinct, showed the ability to kind of read the quarterback. And then the range is there, not just from the speed, but the freaking anticipation. And like, I just, I really think he's a huge sleeper as a kind of a locked in second round grade for me. And just for all the reasons I said, positional flexibility, providing something that this class doesn't really have either. Like I haven't gotten super deep in my safety evals, but no one's really stood out to me other than him, Chris Smith, Sidney Brown, but like, Mm -hmm. it's just not a great class. I don't know if you guys agree there. The safety class is uh, as bad as I've seen, Mm -hmm. I think. Honestly, it's and he's such an interesting player because there's versatility there that you highlighted. And, you know, I just think that you could ask him to handle a lot of different roles. So that's an I had a feeling he would go on this because he's kind of the perfect sweet spot of not a top 50 projection, but somebody that people will gravitate towards on late day two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the safety class is tough, right? Because I think there's there's just a, a huge lack of ability of players who can play single high. You know, I think there's a lot of guys who could play strong safety for you. You know, there's a lot of guys that could play in the box. You know, Sidney Brown, um, Jordan Jordan Battle. Keely uh, Ringo. Yeah, le- well, <laughs> <laughs> JL Skinner, I know some, some people like him a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got guys who are like those nickel safety hybrids like Brian Branch, Antonio Johnson, yeah. Jamie Robinson, right? And so, like... They're like the best one. Yeah, and, and, I, and I'm kind of like naming off a ton of players there, but those are the six or seven best safeties in the class and you're not going to want to put any of them at single high. And so right. I think people look at this class and, and, and Connor's right. They look at it and they go, where's the star power? Cause there's really not that takeover center fielder player in this class. So if you need a box safety or if you need a nickel safety, you might be able to get somebody who can crack a starting lineup for you. But if you're looking for a, a single high guy, it's just, you're, you're going to be left disappointed in this group. I think. Yeah. He, he might be it. Um, next up, uh, I got the snake here. So I'm going to go with someone that I've realized over the last couple of weeks that I'm higher on, and that's Dewan Jones out of Ohio State. Ooh, nice. So nice. I actually have him at tackle four above Darnell Wright and Anton Harrison, even if it's tight. Ooh. I just, I thought he was a lot more polished than he gets credit for. I felt like just across the board, his hand usage was really good. You saw him using snatch techniques and he put, I think it was Jalen Carter. Granted, he was coming from an inside alignment, but he, he tried to contain and he, he's, he freaking you know, snatched and threw Jalen Carter down to the turf. I'm like, all right, that's pretty advanced hand technique there. I think he's like, he's not an incredible athlete cause he's so freaking big, mm-hmm. but that's obviously like his redeeming quality to me him and Makai Becton are like extremely similar as prospects. And Makai Becton got top 15 hype. Everyone was freaking out about him. I think this might be some, you know, PTSD for Makai Becton with Dewan Jones, but it's like, I think you should get similar hype coming out. The freaking wingspan. He's got like, what, a seven foot five wingspan or something ridiculous. Like, even if his foot speed is a little bit behind, and that is the thing, like he gives up inside counters and stuff. But even when he does half the time, he's just got this ridiculous like behemoth reach that it doesn't even matter. Like he's still able to get a hand on you and he, and it's not just the length, his his length is strong length. So like he actually has stopping power when he's in these awkward positions. So he, his technique has room to grow and I just I love the dude. <laughs> so he's off the board. Yeah. No, I it, 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 Juan's unbelievably imposing you know we were we were watching him at the senior bowl and he's just destroying guys there and that's some of the best upperclassmen competition that there was he was so dominant on day one of the senior bowl he was like all right i'm out like i don't need to (laughs) to do anything else i basically was able to uh show where i was going to shine the most and i mean you can't teach the 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 arm length you can't teach the size you can't teach the power I think the foot speed needs to get a little bit faster. He needs to be a little bit lighter on the feet, but that's kind of natural for any bigger player, right? Especially a guy who um, 
you think of how guys naturally won when they were coming through high school and going through college football and doing whatever they needed to do to get on the field with DeWand, it was be big, you know, be strong. And so I think at the next level might be a little bit of a learning curve here as we see with other bigger offensive tackles, but they'll get into that. And I think offensive uh, line coaches will certainly try to get some more foot speed out of them, better balance, be able to control Those two that things, upper. Trevor. Yeah. yeah that, that's that's, 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 that's what came to them. mind for me. I, I worry about the feet and the balance, but that's not to say he has a low floor. It's just that they probably set the ceiling. So I, I, I'm, in, I'm interested to watch him uh, obviously on the right side. I think like Buffalo would be in play or someone like that mm -hmm. at the next level. Yeah, for sure. I, before I, okay. before I make my next pick, when you were bringing up Makai, I was like, didn't, didn't Makai run super fast? I was reminded that Makai oh ran a five one at 364 pounds, which is yeah. just stupid. That is runaway locomotive type of stuff. Yeah. Insane. And right. Dewan did not run, right? No, or did he? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I, I did feel was, like he could kind of. They they did a lot of outside zone stuff. I felt like he could actually kind of get up on the move a little bit for for his size. All right, man. There's so many to choose from. I only get four of these guys. All Who's right, who's Connor I'm, gonna take from you? No, I don't think he's, I don't. I don't think he's gonna take anybody from me. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. It'd be too easy. It would just be trolling. I'm going to go, I'll go Luke Shoemaker as my next one. The Ooh. Michigan, the Michigan tight end. There's a deeper cut. Dude, I, I really like him. And he, I, I did not watch his tape for the longest time. And really up until like two weeks ago when I was going through tight ends, uh, I had like seven, eight, nine tight ends that I graded. Yeah. And then I was hearing people talk about Shoemaker. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I got to get to him. He's awesome. I mean, he, he's got prototypical size. Um, mock draftables got him at from this, from the combine. Six foot five, 251 pounds. So a little bit on, on the lighter side, but he's a better athlete. Like he's he had an 83rd percentile 40 yard dash. He had a 463 40 yard dash. He had a 127 inch broad jump, which is 95th percentile. It wasn't as impressive at the vertical, but the 20 yard shuttle of 427, that was 72nd percentile. So that shows you just how well this dude can move. I was really impressed when I turned on the tape with the change of direction and the cut ability from him he gets out of his stance he gets into his route and he can even sink his hips pretty damn well for a guy who is six foot five and 250 pounds so you have some really nice receiving ability from him and i think he blocks his ass off like i think he is a competitive blocker as well so it's a tight end class that gets a lot of hype at the at the top and you know we've seen a lot of the big media guys really hyping up this tight end class that oh you know we might be seeing five six tight ends going in the first two rounds something like that but you know Dalton Kincaid, Darnell Washington, Michael Mayer, okay maybe he's not in those tier of players but he's probably going to be in that next tier for me. He'll probably end up close to my top 5 tight ends and uh I guess for that I got to have him as one of my guys for as much as I really liked how well rounded his tape was. Yeah, that's saying a lot in this class, especially. Um, my only thing with him is he's going to be 25 this fall, so I was just like, oh, that's a little bit. Like, I felt like the play strength was a little bit less, and he was a little underutilized, so he's kind of got that, like, not not quite George Kittle projection, but kind of that, like, um, Foster Moreau, Dawson Knox, kind of like, um, who's the guy out of San Diego State? Bellinger last yeah, year. Yeah, like, I, th I thought he was very similar to how uh, Ohio State used a Rucker. Yep. Who oh, I was I could see that. Shoot, I was a sucker for record a little bit. Yeah, too, so maybe you know, yeah. got a, got a type here. You have a type. Yeah, but uh, all right, boys. It appears I get back to back picks here. That is and how it goes. Tre I mean, Trevor is not going to be surprised at all by the first one. The second one might be a little interesting, but I'll go a little higher on the board than what I went with Diaby, and of course, take Cedric Tillman. And this is someone that I think everybody's caught up by mm -hmm. now. Uh, me and Trevor did our top 10 wide receivers. It feels like two months ago now, Trevor. And uh, I, I was pretty high on him when I got to 2021, just the type of player he is in this class where it's loaded with slot receivers. And he's a unique player in the sense that he can play on the outside. He can block, he can shield defenders to win the football. He catches everything. Uh, he's extremely, extremely tough. I thought he, he has good route running at that size. He's a solid athlete. He really is. He's not going to run, obviously, four or three, but he doesn't have to. It's long build-up speed instead with Tillman. And I just think he's 
way better in the air than most defensive backs he went against, whether it's timing, whether it's catch radius. He has no fear going across the middle as well. And I just think that ankle injury this year couldn't have come at a worse time for him because he probably would have been a consensus top five wide receiver if he stayed healthy all year. And, you know, it opened the door for Jalen Hyatt in an offense that can scheme up, you know, touches for wide receivers as good as any offense in the country. Um, but on the flip side, it hurt Tillman's stock. And I don't think that ankle was right. That's why I didn't do the senior bowl. Fortunately, he was able to test. And like I said, he tested well. So Tillman's the guy I, I have to have here because I just think it's crazy to me. Like he, I was saying to Trevor earlier today, Marcus, he's bigger than Quentin Johnston. And nobody talks about that. Yeah. that he's, and he has, I mean, when you want to talk about hands, it's not even in the same planet. Like right. Quentin Johnston fights everything. Cedric Tillman catches everything with his hands, not with his body. And I, I get the excitement with Quentin Johnson because his flashes are as good as it gets. But I, I just am. It's funny the narrative or lack of narrative around Tillman to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you stole him from me for sure. <laughs> he would have been gone by your next pick, I think. Another guy that I wouldn't have dared. But he's also I like he, he he's not one of my guys, so I would I sure, would have yeah. never like picked him anyways. But yeah. he is he is good. So next up for me. I'm going to take Jack Campbell, um, man with Jack Campbell. Like we had the conversation on stock exchange going back to summer. We were like, guys never out of place. He yep. he's great tackler. He's big. A lot of linebackers in college football. My God, it's like six, one, two, 25 or six, two, two, 30, every single guy. And I get it with the way the game is gone, but Jack Campbell, you look at him and I have everything up right here. Almost six, five, two fifty. And, you know, big hands. Um, and it's like, how's he going to test? And then you look at his relative athletic score. He's a 9.98. I mean, he's an elite tester at his size. The 40 was his worst mark, and it's a 4.65. Like, anything under a 4.7 for Jack Campbell, sign me up. Great. Mm-hmm. Because when you pair instincts or compare instincts to speed, and you have elite instincts and good speed, you're going to be fine. And that's what Campbell has. But... The agility is elite. I mean, the six, seven, four, three cone, the explosiveness in the jumps. Uh, and like I said, there's, if somebody has bad, bad Jack Campbell tape, and I'm talking like four quarters in a row, let me know what it is because I haven't found it yet. The guy just, he's the model of consistency in the middle of the field in a league that, I mean, is every team just drafting six foot one, 220 pound linebackers for the next 10 years. At some point you need a tough guy in the middle of the field. Like who's, you know, diving into the pile when these push sneaks are happening all the time who's stopping the run through the a gap who's getting hands on these massive tight ends that are coming into the league i don't think campbell's a first round player or will be a first round player uh, but i think he's one of the best players in terms of polish in this entire draft on the defensive side of the ball yeah couldn't have said it better myself i i'm curious uh as someone that spends so much time around the jets i've got him compared to cj mosley i like that and it's the size isn't quite there but i feel like mosley plays so much bigger than I think he's listed at like 6'2", 230. He feels like he's 6'3", 250 when he's I watch him. around a lot. It's yeah. weird, his career. Like, he lost a ton of weight for Salah's scheme, but I think when they signed him to play for Gase, yeah, he was he's listed 6'2", 250. I think CJ's playing about 6'2", 230, yeah. 240 yep. this year. Yep, so, yeah, I just think. like day one starter, even if he's never a superstar, it's like you get that top of the second round all day. All right, so... I'm up. Do I have one pick or two picks? Wait, I'm up, right? Trevor's up. Trevor's up, and then I go to... And then then you go go back to back. Um, It's very interesting having a three-person snake draft because I'm just like in the middle of you guys getting back-to-back picks. Uh, All right, so for my third selection, I'm going to go with UAB running back Dwayne McBride. I went through some of my final running back ranking film, and when I got to McBride, I was so impressed with just how overall his his game is i mean it is it is so well-rounded this guy's got fantastic footwork he is a a, he looks like a real awful time to hit i mean he looks like you are trying to tackle a brick wall when you try to tackle this dude he is bouncing off all sorts of now look uab doesn't play the best competition i fully understand that but as connor and i talk about all the time when you play at a lower level competition, whether it's, you know, a group of five, whether it's FCS, whatever it is, you want to see those players truly stand out. Dwayne McBride absolutely did. He had a 93.5 rushing grade this past year. 
17 over 1700 rushing yards over 1100 rushing yards after contact which is nuts he had 19 touchdowns he had 59 force missed tackles and an average of 0.25 force missed tackles per attempt which is a pretty dang high number you want to get something around the threes is really impressive and he's really close to that and then he also had 48 explosive runs of 10 yards or more like to me this guy had really nice long speed, not like elite long speed or anything, but when we talk about running backs, I do think we, as a whole, as a society, uh, kind of overvalue home run breaking speed a little bit because those opportunities just don't happen very often. Mm-hmm. Sure, would you love to have the exact guy that can turn a carry into a 60-yard gain when that happens? Yeah, you would, of course, love to have that guy on the field with the ball in their hands. But the chances of that getting blocked up as well or the defense failing to lose run contain in order for that to even be a recipe for you to use that kind of speed just doesn't happen a lot in the league. And instead, it's a lot of yards after contact, making sure you're falling forward, healthy yards per carry average, uh, really good vision and footwork, good balance, all this kind of stuff. And when I look at Dwayne McBride, the only part of his game that I would really say is a maybe a pro-level deficiency is that top-end gear speed, but everything else is right there. He's going to be the guy who his footwork, I think, is fantastic, the way that he navigates the line of scrimmage for zone-blocking schemes and power-blocking schemes. You know, the way that he's always fallen forward, the way that he can bounce off a of contact. I just, I, I I was so impressed when I finally got around to his film. He is going to be, without question, a top five running back for me. He might even be my RB3 when it's all said and done behind uh, B. John Robinson and Jameer Gibbs. Uh, and so that's why I think for him being that high on my list, he's he's got to represent as one of my guys. Well, and Trevor, I know you're a, you're a big Madden guy and... One thing that I think he's played a lot of Madden in his life, McBride, mm. because he does something that really works in Madden on the real field. And that's like he he compensates for that lack of speed by kind of setting up bad angles where he'll kind of like if, if he hits that second level, I noticed he'll kind of like drift towards the safety a little bit, set up a bad angle. And then he like he like cuts it to the outside Go the other like, way. That's yeah. that's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty shifty. A year right Very there. Savvy. So. That is very, yeah. that is a very Madden thing. It is yeah. a very Madden thing. It just right. it just kind of hit me one one day watching him. Um, so I'm up. Yep. You guys are the ones keeping track of the order at this point. So yeah, and you you finish your draft. This is it. Guys. This is my final pick. Okay. Final two. Oh, back to back. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. yeah. All right. Um, my next two guys are also offensive linemen. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to go three offensive linemen here, but I will take one of these guys. I was going to actually take Paris Johnson and go both Ohio State tackles, mm. but I'm going to I'm going to stay stay home in Minnesota here with John Michael Schmitz. Okay, no, uh, he's he, one of he, mine. Nice. He he's going to end up, I think, as a top you know 30, 32 player, a guy that should go in the first round for me. I keep mocking him to the Giants in the first round, just like. I don't think he's quite what Creed Humphrey was just because Creed was a little bit better athletically, but just stylistically, like, man, so similar. Just feels like a wrestler in the trenches. This dude's been starting for four years. He's been one of the best centers in college football since 2019. So you're not going to throw any stunts or blitzes at him that he's not going to be able to pick up and pass pro. If you leave him one-on-one, like, and he's going against the Chris Joneses and the Jeffrey Simmons of the world. Like, yeah, you might lose a little bit more than you'd like, but at center, you can protect that. I just feel like you can plug him into any run scheme. He's going to be an immediate starter at an offensive line, just position at large that if you're a day one starter, you should be in the first round, in my opinion. So pretty, pretty easy kind of explanation on why I love him so much. And he's just not getting that sort of hype across the board. I don't think. And with his size, yeah, I, f- I feel like he's he actually has a little bit of guard versatility to him. You know, a lot of times when you look at center prospects, it's like, OK, they're only centers. You really can't you really can't move them anywhere else. And it feels like his tape, his like just overall strength and even like the weight I feel like he can carry because uh, I think he's right around like 300 right now. Yep. I can't remember. What did he weigh into the senior bowl? 
Wasn't he a little higher? Co- combine 301, but I thought the Senior Bowl he was he was closer to 310. Yeah, I, I thought he was 310 as well. I thought he was a little bit bigger. So yeah, like, he cut he cut down for. So you can get him around like 315 if you wanted him to play guard there, and, and you could be fine yeah. there. So yeah, um, yeah. And then I'm gonna take a receiver for myself. You took but which, Tillman, but which one? You took Tillman from me. Trevor's taking one. So I'm gonna. T- I'm on high alert here. I'll go down the board a little bit because I I talked about Jaden Reed already for my top ten receivers. <laughs> down the board. Down the board. <laughs> I'll take Jonathan Mingo. Oh, okay. there it is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating. Oh damn it. I'm sweating. Left no, until happy. the end because I didn't think he was gonna get taken. All right, we're I still know. good. I would never do that. We're still <laughs> good. We're still good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go Mingo. Thought he was super well rounded. Um, route running impressed me at the Senior Bowl. I just, you know, with the size and with this class going into the Senior Bowl week, I was kind of, you know, eyeing him a little bit because we, we, you know, everyone's talked about how small this receiver class is. So if you can find the four or five guys in this class that can actually maybe be like a, you know, starting Y on the outside, I think he can he can get to that point. I. I didn't see any like notable huge issues with his game, even if he wasn't like the best route runner or the smoothest athlete, the most productive guy. I did think what he showed as a deep threat was really impressive. I felt like he just he sets guys up well to kind of get into that second level. I thought he had a second gear to track the deep ball and he has enough speed. I mean, the dude's 220 pounds. He ran four, four, five. So like he's just a guy that, you know, some of these smaller guys, especially guys like Jalen Hyatt, you know. Yeah, he's got great speed, but how often is he actually going to be running at that speed when he's constantly getting banged down the field? Like, I think Mingo can continue to accelerate through contact, um, be that threat on the outside. I think there's more to be used there in sort of the like the Debo role kind of stuff, uh, kind of crossing routes and get the ball in his hands. I, I thought he showed really good flashes after the catch. I mean, he's so big, maybe not the most creative guy, but like, yeah, I think he's just someone that's buried in a deep class in the third fourth round that could could definitely be kind of a surprising number three contributor on an offense connor was a little bit higher on him than i was when we went through our wide receivers but the conversation that we had about it was pretty similar about the player like he's very well-rounded and you know i i was really impressed with how well he moved at his size i thought he had good yard after the catch ability Uh, i thought the route tree was pretty diverse for him the only thing that really bugged me is he's he, I don't want to say has had like big drop issues, but he's kind of had drop problems throughout his whole career that he's been at Old Miss and the catchable the, the catchable reception percentage this past year was good. It was above 90%, but every other year before this year it was like low 80s and even below 80s. So that's kind of that was kind of the issue to me is is how much of a natural pass catcher is he and when we had chatted about this, Connor made the good point where it's like, okay, well, he de- he definitely got better, and I agree with that. If this year that we saw this year is the baseline for what we're going to get for him moving forward, I agree with you. I think that he could be a really nice potential wide receiver three, wide receiver four. But if it was like, okay, this was the best year, maybe some drop issues and some mm-hmm. contested catch issues are going to kind of come back for him, then all of a sudden it's like, Oh man, that might be tough to make a roster if you're a wide receiver three, wide receiver four, wide receiver five, and you're not as reliable as they need you to be catching the football. So that was really my only issue with Mingo because the rest of his profile is really nice. For sure. Oh, is it me? Yeah, you're up. Okay. I mean. (laughs) You know where he's going here. I love it. Yeah, I knew. Michael Wilson, baby. There it is. Michael Wilson from Stanford. I should have my stolen guy. from you. Yeah. No. My taken. guy. I, uh, <laughs> I I love Michael Wilson, man. I, all three of us were at the Senior Bowl, and we got to watch him put on an absolute show. I mean, we really haven't had a big opportunity to see him over the last three years of college football just because he's had a handful of injuries, uh, lower body injuries as well. So not great, uh, admittedly. When we, we spoke about him on our podcast, I admit that there's going to be a lot of teams that might just have him off the board completely. Just medical red flag him. Hey, he's had too many lower body injuries. Uh, we don't want to have to deal with it. But what we have seen on the field the last two years, I'll say specifically, and then at the Senior Bowl for sure, is a wide receiver who understands how to win at the position. This guy's not even that athletic. 
Like, like I, th- I think he's a, I think he's a decent athlete, yep. but he's not like a big time athlete. But you are watching him separate from corners on vertical routes because his releases are so nice. He is setting up these corners to flip their hips the wrong direction, and then boom, he immediately hits the blind spot to where their back is. He's getting them all turned around and confused, and now all of a sudden, a guy who really doesn't have that impressive of long speed is creating two, three, four yards of separation because he's because he knew exactly what he was he was going to do. He was in control the whole time. Shorter arms, but really nice with contested catches when the ball is within his range. One of the stronger receivers in the class can block his ass off. And I think that's absolutely something that's going to get him on the field. And I think this is worth noting too. He was voted a captain by his teammates after not playing a lot of games over the first two seasons. And they 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 wanted this guy to represent them, have the C on his chest, be a captain. And so just all of that goes into a profile that I absolutely love. Connor mentioned this about why he loves Cedric Tillman because it's a class full of slot wide receivers. And Michael Wilson to me is somebody who gives you a strong possession wide receiver, kind of a profile that as long as he is healthy, I think this dude's going to be a nice contributing receiver at the NFL level. Yeah. Trevor and I have small receiver fatigue, Marcus. I, yeah, I think we all kind of do a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm really glad, you know, to have someone else on here raving about him. Um, he, it's a little bit scary. Uh, as a Packers fan, how much he reminds me of like year two Devontae Adams, kind of before mm. he hit that skyrocket trajectory, mm, had some drop him. issues mm, early him. in his career. But Devontae also, if you look at their like profile, physical profile, it's like almost identical. Devontae ran like a four, five, six, I think. Oh, Wilson man, was like four, did. five, eight. They're both six, one, two, 15. The way they move is like identical. It's just like, and and some of the way he answered questions at the senior bowl, you, and you mentioned the character, and like that's been a big thing for Devontae. Is he's just a psycho worker? It's like, yeah, I'm not Dude, saying he's going to be Devontae, Captain, but it's pretty same. crazy. They're, they're, they're the, the same. same prospect. They're the same prospect. The measurables are insane. Yeah. See, Connor, I told you you were wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You idiot. Dude, he's already <laughs> got his gold jacket, Connor. Jesus. Man, I'm rooting like hell for him. Because I've told Trevor I just love the player. Um, I've become such a grumpy old man with <laughs> with broken prospects. And it's gonna it's gonna get me at some point real soon because like somebody's gonna get healthy at the right time and just figure it out, and I hope it's him. So I close this thing out for I have one pick. Yep. Trevor definitely has another pick. No, that was my fourth. That was your fourth. Yeah. I closed this out. So you closed it first. Out. Yeah. Duh. All right. Here's a fun one for you guys. Uh, somebody I was a little late on. How about Israel Abanacanda Ooh, from nice. Pittsburgh? I, you want to talk about home run speed, but I also like the body type. I think he's somebody that you could run him for days in between the tackles. You can get him going outside zone. Uh, what I'm fascinated by, is he somebody that Pitt just didn't use him as a pass catcher or he's bad at it? Mm-hmm. Like, I truly don't. I don't think he's he's pro ready and pass pro yet, which 95% of running back prospects, like they just aren't. They're really yeah. not. It's pretty rare for a guy to come in. That's something you get coached up at the NFL level. And it's really, you have the body type to do it. And he does. So a band of Canada to me, uh, he's a top five running back in this draft class. Oh, he's man. somebody on day two. Like you go to the right place and you just utilize his speed and his ability to create his own yards. He could be a really, really special runner from this draft. And anything you get as a pass catcher is just this added bonus because we don't really know yet. But his production was off the charts and his running style. And once again, like I like Trevor pointing out something early. How often do you actually get to just run in a straight line really, really fast? But he is someone, if there's any daylight, he does have that chance to rip off 50, 60 yards. And there's not a lot of guys at the running back position that come out of college anymore that could do that. Like I don't even feel that way about Bijan Robinson. I think he's an incredible football player, but I don't look at Bijan and go, he's just going to rip off 60 yard runs all the time. Mm. Um, and Abana Kanda certainly can. Yeah. His, his ceiling is definitely going to be reached in one of those like Shanahan schemes for sure. Ooh, yeah. Um, I, I would push back a little bit on like the, between the tackle stuff and even the size, like I was really surprised what he weighed in at. I, I think it's just like, he's got that even body distribution, which actually isn't yeah. great for running backs. I want to see some more, you know, junk in the trunk. And I just, I, I felt like he went down on first contact a lot. Dude, but he, he's young though. That's, that's the true. thing like that I say with him. Like he's not even close to his final like body type being filled out. Like I have him. Um, Is he going to be 21 next year? Like he, 
He's currently he 20. I, I think he turns yeah. 21 next season. That's like yeah. Ronald Jones when he was coming yeah. out. Ronald Jones yeah. is 20, uh, I think, on draft night, which is crazy. Yep. Tremaine Edmonds. Well, Tremaine Edmonds is still 20. He's still 20. What's crazy right? is like, that Tremaine Edmonds, yeah, is not, he isn't even 21 years old yet. So I, I get that, Marcus, but like I, I always factor that in. Like, God, when I like when you think of 20 in college and like your body is just so different at like 23 for these guys, like even quarterbacks at arm strength that could change. So if he gets to like an NFL 220 on an NFL weight program and nutrition and not have to go to class True. anymore. And like, I think that's where he's ultimately going to be at. Yeah, he's got the frame for it for sure. Yeah, I think I think running backs. You know, Connor and I haven't gone over our final running back rankings. Um, I think we'll probably rope that into, maybe we'll make that our its own episode, or maybe we'll just kind of rope it into our final big board. But I think running back rankings should be very different because like Connor's going to be a lot higher on Abena Canada than I am. But like the the position, we can't talk about the position and say, oh, you know, devalue running backs because anybody can really succeed in a variety of different systems. And then all have the same exact running back rankings. Like, yeah, I, right. I don't think that's not how it should work. And I think there's a, there's, a, I feel like there's too much groupthink when it comes to running back rankings in particular. And I really do believe that some positions like quarterback, we're all probably going to see quarterbacks somewhat the same, maybe a little bit different, but it's probably all, a lot of it's probably going to be the same. Uh, you know, like linebackers, maybe going to be the same corners will probably be generally the same offensive tackles probably the same way but like running back there are so many different flavors of how guys can win at the nfl level that i think when you ask people what their rankings are you should get the most diversity from that position and so it's always really cool i always enjoy hearing uh different people's take on on where they would rank running backs and where they would take running backs for sure all right i think you got you got one more connor why no, I, I have four. Yeah, that's four. Oh, you just had one at Tillman, the end. All right, so Campbell, we're done. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so just to recap, I took Jatavis Martin, Dewan Jones, John Michael Schmitz, giving the old lineman some love, Beef. and Jonathan Mingo. Nice. And then you guys should recap yours, just in case I screw it up. I uh, I took Devon Witherspoon up top, uh, then Luke Schoonmaker, the tight end from Michigan, and Dwayne McBride, the running back from UAB, and wrapped it up with um, future Devontae Adams himself, um, Mr. Michael <laughs> Wilson from Stanford. Um, wait, shaking my fist at the sky in anger that I that I didn't catch that <laughs> com- player comparison. I'm doomed. Um, okay, I started this thing off with a surprise pick with Yaya Diaby. Took Cedric Tillman, the wide receiver from Tennessee, Jack Campbell, the linebacker from Iowa, and closed it out with a day two running back in Israel, Abana Kanda from Pitt. Awesome. So a little mix of skill and defense. Now we get to the like the sad part. Yeah. The guys that were the biggest haters of. Mm. This is when the the Twitter Twitter takes come back at us three years down the road. Mm. Yeah, I don't even, you know what's funny about that? I don't do that, and I don't tweet about guys I'm low on that much anymore. No, don't, it, can't do it. You can never be wrong on a prospect. No, but number of two, not. No, no, no. It's just like a tough lane to live in. Yeah. Like, I'll talk about it for days on a podcast, because it's, you can explain yourself like an adult. You're right. But when you have right. like 100 characters, it's <laughs> like, what can, like, that's not yeah. value. Yeah, anymore. like if you tweet, if you tweet, hey, you know what? I'm a little bit lower on this guy. It'll get quote tweeted when oh, he yeah. has like his first 100 yard game. Be like, look at this bum. And it's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> that's like, at your like, employer, you're like, right. fire this idiot. Yeah. And you're just like, oh man, what happened? <laughs> like, well, we've never missed on a prospect. So no, of course not. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're batting a thousand. Absolutely. No, we're so, professionals, okay. guys. <laughs> are we Are we keeping the same order for the, uh, the not my guys draft? Is that what we're doing? Well, yeah, I guess we just we just keep the order going, right? So okay. Okay. back to yeah, back to Trevor, right? No, Connor, no, I think Connor, I, kick it, I Connor kick it would start. Yeah, 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 let's go. Are, how wow. many how many rounds are we going? Two rounds? Two. You, yeah, one. you guys want to do two? Yeah, let's do two. We can do two. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna right. hate. I'm in hater mood. Yeah, I'm in a hater mood. All right, I this is like this is pretty tough because I'm not as familiar. I'm not as familiar with consensus, but I just see what I see. I I don't see it with zach evans i don't and Mm. and like the question is well what does that mean and and this is uh just so people know that's uh ole miss running back right ole miss running back i need to stop talking like everybody lives and breathes the draft (laughs) around like an absolute animal i apologize 
to the franchise guys audience. <laughs> um, so at Evans, so Trevor and I did running backs last summer, and obviously he was on the list because he's a former five star. He transferred from TCU, and you know there's all this excitement. And I just don't think he's a very creative runner. I don't see much vision. Uh, I thought the contact balance was fine for some tough yards here and there. Like, I don't really see a lot of ceiling in terms of a pass catcher. I, for a former five-star with all this hype, I mean, I know the freshman from Ole Miss is amazing, but, like, you still had reps taken from you from a, from a freshman. Mm-hmm. So I, Evans won't be – I don't think he'll be a top-10 running back for me in this class, and I don't know if a lot of people – maybe that has caught up, but I feel like three months ago he was like a lock to be a top five back for most people. Well, I think just in general, you got a true junior coming out of Ole Miss, like, and you're going to get some expectations there. I'm totally, I mean, just checking my notes, I've got him RB 16 out of 18 right now. Right. And that could continue to fall. So yeah, I'm totally in agreement. I'm I'm the same. He's, I don't know. I can't remember how many running backs I have officially, but he's low towards the list and not just a five-star recruit, Connor, that you remember the number one overall recruit at one point, like this dude was, and anybody out there, oh, if you geez. go watch, if you go watch Zach Evans high school tape, it's hilarious. It 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 is like truly a men amongst boys kind of a thing. It, it's it's these people don't even deserve to be on the same field that that he is on. It it is it is a hilarious watch. And unfortunately, when you watch him now, he's the same player just playing against better competition. So like Con- Connor said, there's no creativity. He's just trying to out athlete everybody. He's not really trying to read the line of scrimmage. He's not really trying to set guys up. He's not trying to make people miss. He's trying to just get the ball, go north to south, and run through people because he thinks he's more athletic and stronger than them. And that's why Quinshawn Judkins outpaced him towards the yes, end of the Judkins. year. Because he's because yes. Judkins is more creative. And I think he gave him more. So I I I, I, I definitely better. agree with that. Um all right. So I'm up next. All right. I'm going to come out the gate hot. Tyree Wilson. All right. I I'm letting I'm letting somebody else pick Tyree Wilson in the top 10. And I see I see a lot of people mock Tyree Wilson top 5. Um I know Lance Zerline who I love Lance. Lance had him going number 2 to the Texans mm-hmm. and it's and it's like I've I've seen him go number 3 overall to the Arizona Cardinals. Connor and I have talked about that before when we did our post combine mock. Connor was here in the buzz that hey in consideration to be the first defensive prospect taken. And I think that he's right. When we're doing predictive mocks, a lot of times we have them up there. I would take Tyree Wilson like back end of the first round, early second yep. round. That's oh, yeah. that's where I would take Tyree Wilson. And a lot of people are a lot higher on him than me, but I'm looking at an older prospect, really didn't break out until this season. Um, I think the flashes are really great, but I I did not see a really consistent player. I thought the peaks and valleys between what his best plays were and then what his like average play was, was a lot further down and a lot less impact than you would want. Obviously you can't teach the size. You can't teach that length. I think you have a lot of versatility of a player who could give interior offensive linemen hell. If you line them up at three technique, obviously he's somebody who could play as a four eye in a three down defensive system. He can play on the edge for you. And he's even, I think, flexible enough or explosive enough with speed to power to be able to play as a stand-up edge rusher as well. So when you combine all of those things, you can, get, you can get a lot of really good plays from him. But again, when I watched him, I did not see a consistent impact player that you're taking anywhere near the same spot of Will Anderson. You know, or, Mm -hmm. or of course, like Jalen Carter, obviously take the off the field stuff out of it. But like we were talking about him being grouped in the same spot as these guys or, you know, taking Tyree Wilson over Christian Gonzalez or Devon Witherspoon or those guys. And those prospects are way higher on the board for me than I think where I'm going to end up with Wilson. So I would take Wilson because of the intrigue and the flashes at the back end of the first round, top 10, top five, top three. That's that's why I got to kind of call it out here and just say, like, I'll, I'd let somebody else draft him in the top half of the first round. Yeah, that's you're making me rethink my stance on Tyree Wilson, because everything you said, like grading wise, like I've got almost all four of the corners above him. And yeah, I like the difference between him and Lucas Van Ness is like very. And and Van Ness is another player who like I like Van Ness. 
but he's flashes right now. Van Ness is yeah, another yeah. player who I'd, I'd go like, okay, this should be a maybe back into the first round if you're a team that, okay, like the Chiefs or something like that, that could take a chance on. Chiefs have a Menahue. They have uh, George Karloff this. They, they don't need somebody to come in right away. But, you know, we're talking about Van Ness going eight to the Falcons. Right. It's like, it's like man, like that's... For- to me, that's to me that's wild. So that's yeah. kind of the way that I'm seeing. The, it the one thing, like at least compared to like Trayvon Walker last year, at least when Wilson connects, it's like there's reps where he is just overloading a dude with that bull rush, which is mm. like I was a huge Rashawn Gary guy coming out. Um, like one of my early like good videos was like the hate's gone too far on Gary, and it was because the flashes of just that dominating bull rush was actually there with him that I didn't see with Trayvon Walker, and I do see that uh, with Tyree Wilson at least. Um, but am I up? You're back now? to back. Yeah. Back to back. To back. back. Okay. I'm also going to go a little hot here. And it's kind of a hybrid, my guy, not my guy pick. I'm going to take CJ Stroud for a not my guy. Ooh. Strictly based on that's the, a sizzler one. Okay. Just strictly based on where the conversation is at with him. I like CJ Stroud. He's my QB two. I liked him a lot more than I thought he would. I think he's going to be a really good starter in the NFL for a long time. I like where you're going here already. I just want to make that clear. Okay. I, like I compare him right to Jared Goff with wheels. I think he's like, as a passer, an identical player. He's just a little bit more athletic. Two two points here. Mm-hmm. If the Panthers traded DJ Moore and all those picks to get that player, that's just stupid. If he turns out to be the guy that I think he's going to be. Now, could totally be wrong there, but I just don't see the incredible creativity, the high-end stuff from Stroud. The accuracy is the best thing he's got. You know, um, if you're trading up to take that player alone, I think that's a mistake, let alone passing on Bryce Young, who to me, the conversation has gotten way out of hand. The size does not impact his play at all. He's probably the best quarterback in this class attacking the middle of the field, which is supposed to be what hurts you know, guys with size. I know you guys both are kind of with me on this, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, I think Bryce is phenomenal. Yes. And yeah, like Bryce is tier one. He should be the first quarterback off the board. And I think it's it's just stupid if the Panthers are going to pass on him for C.J. Stroud. And I would take it a step further with the Texans at pick two. I wouldn't take C.J. Stroud at two. I would take Will Anderson and kick the can into next year and, and wait on, you know, Drake May or, or Caleb Williams because I just think they... Can they do that? Spicy. That's a great question if they can, but they got a first-year head coach. They're slowly building this thing up. I think the roster's in a situation where they're at least a real team again. <laughs> so, like... I don't know. I, I like Stroud. I think for the Colts at four, like, sure. Raiders at seven, sure. Like, he's a first-round player. I think he's going to be a really good starter. But the conversation changes based on kind of what you're able to do and what you can swing for for certain teams. I, Connor, I, Connor and I both have Bryce Young as as QB1 in this class. Um, yeah, we think he's pretty special. Yeah, and it's just – it's. We we definitely uh, and we've talked about this on our podcast. Like we get it, we understand the criticism of it. You know, there just aren't a lot of quarterbacks of his size that have not not only succeeded but just even survived at at his size. Because I think that's the big issue, right? But dude's been the best player in college football over the last two years. I uh, he he plays the the position with such a high natural football IQ that the game moves in slow motion for him. And it does. And, and you know, there's a lot of people out there that, that would say like, hey, you know what? Just let somebody else take Bryce. And there's a lot of people that I've talked to that would be like, I like Bryce. I'd probably let somebody else take him. I wouldn't let somebody else take him. Right. Like, I wouldn't be the one to pass on Bryce because that's the, that is the crazy part is you can believe in a lot of the highs of C.J. Stroud. And C.J. Stroud still might be a good quarterback for you. If the Panthers pick Stroud at one and Bryce goes two, and Bryce is just this perennial all pro player, just like he was at Alabama and how he dominated that level of competition. And I, that, that's one of those things where it's like, you can't forgive yourself, right? Yeah. You, you can't, you can't have overthought yourself that hard. And if we're really going to sit here and preach, watch the tape, the tape is what matters. Bryce has been the best. So yep. I agree. So I probably could have done that without being a hater on Stroud and just made Bryce young and my guy, but <laughs> Hey, you know what? Had to, be, had, to get, had, to, had to get the conversation no, I, in the yeah. episode. So, yeah, I think it was an interesting conversation. Yeah, I, I don't think it's as sizzling as like 
the way you explain how you feel about Stroud didn't make it overly sizzling. You're just explaining it from a perspective of quarterback tiers. Yeah. Um, do I have one more? Yep. You have one more. You go back. back. Um, you get to double the hate. I'll go Jalen Hyatt. And I think it's, you know, people are kind of now at this point with him. So I don't, I don't need to spend too much time on it, but it's just, it's, it's the size. I, if he was just listed at that size, I wouldn't necessarily be worried about it, but it was even worse to actually see on film. Like when he got hit down the field, he didn't just slow down. He would like Mm -hmm. topple over. So, the frame is a huge concern. You pair that with the fact that what do you see, like 17 press coverage snaps in his last year? Right. He had one right. catch against press. From that system, the free releases. My comparison for him is is Quez Watkins for the Eagles. Went like the you know, day three. He's been an adequate deep threat as like a fourth piece of that offense. That's that's who Jalen Hyatt is to me. I, I don't think you draft that guy. I, I get the speed. Like top 50 to me for him is is rich. It has to be a very specific spot where like he is plugging into a fine tuned role. Um, and now I'm realizing, I think I just mocked him to the jets at 44. So like <laughs> I'm setting myself up to get roasted here, but um, like, let's just say first round for him to me is, is I just can't get there. I don't think it's crazy. I uh, know. I, I agree. Wait. We didn't have him in our top five wide receivers. No. Yeah, I, I'm I'm worried about Hyatt. I, I think a lot I think his production was really schemed up this past year. And when you look at years past and he really wasn't able to crack a consistent producing role for them, and then you go to this year and it's like, okay, well in or may it might have just been just since Hypel got there and Hypel's system that he was able to really produce a lot. Um mm-hmm. There's a reason why they didn't put him on the line of scrimmage. There's a reason why they only put him in the slot. There's a reason why they put him as the back man in the stack alignments. Like because of what you said, he's just, he's not a very physical wide receiver. Like he's not, people, people go, Oh, like he'd be deep, great deep threat. There's more that goes into being a deep threat than just having speed. Like mm-hmm. when you are a deep threat wide receiver, you also have to win in contested catches. Like you also yep. have to win with strength because Sure, there's going to be opportunities where you set yourself up against a corner who's got outside leverage or inside leverage, or you get him turned around and you put your foot in the ground and you run a skinny post on him and boom, all of a sudden there's nobody within 20 yards. Sure, those plays might exist three times a season, but the rest of the time, the DBs or the safeties are probably going to be playing you well enough to where you got to make a catch at the catch point 20, 30, 40 yards down the field. And Mm -hmm. I don't really have the faith in Jalen Hyatt to be able to do that consistently. And also just like, don't run a four, four, please. Like, can we at least get, you know, four, two well, speed the for way me? it's at the weight. It's definitely frustrating. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, All right. We got two more me? picks, right? Uh, my yep. second one, this is, this one's going to be interesting. Cause I think Marcus, you said that you had this guy as one of your guys last week. For Renner, I think you said at the top of the podcast, but did you have Mozzie Smith as one I of did. your guys? I did. So I'm skeptical of Mozzie, and I still think that this is a player who, on athleticism alone, you're probably taking somewhere on day two. Um, you know, you're probably taking him somewhere round three at the worst, round two if you really think you can get something out of him. Um, but I've seen some people try to sneak him into the back end of the first round, and I've seen some hype of that. And um, okay, so you, I mean, yep, you're, you're one it. of those people then. So yep. my biggest concern with Mozzie is not the lack of ability. It's just the lack of consistency. If mm-hmm. you turn on the Ohio State game, you will watch a player who is fully focused, fully dominant, plays well, incredible reps. If you turn on the Indiana game, you will see a player who is getting beat by interior offensive linemen and that he should not get beat by and somebody who is a complete non-impact player. I don't know how much I can trust a player who runs that hot and cold because you you love to watch him against the best competition. You love to watch him against the Ohio state offensive line. If you will, the fact that he was beating up the Ohio state offensive line and that he was making a big difference in a meaningful game in a rivalry game, that stuff definitely matters. You want to watch those games when you watch a guy's prospect profile, but you also got to turn on some of those games where, hey, it's just a 
regular old Saturday in October and we're traveling to Indiana and it's not a sold out crowd and Ohio state's going to win by 49 and you got to see how they're showing up there too. And I felt like in those games, his motor just wasn't running as high. And so the reason why I'm a little hands off on him right now, again, if I'm a team and he's there in the third round, you're taking him because you've seen really great flashes from him. But for people who might be banging the table for him in the first round, that just wouldn't be me because I feel like I've seen a little bit too much of the highs and the lows, the Jekyll and the Hyde, the motivated and the not motivated from yeah. him. And that just wor- it just worries me a little bit from the tape sure. that I've watched. Well, it's yeah, it's it's good to get that perspective because um could just be like, you know, just kind of depends like which which games we watch too. Like maybe yeah, I need to revisit sure. one of those games you you were talking about to see some of those concerns. Um to me there's two things I want to say. Number one, I'm curious. Did you notice how often they were using him in like a squatty potty stance? I, I, that? I feel like that he, he kind of like has that build. So maybe I didn't notice that exact thing, but yeah, I, I guess I, I did. I noticed that it, it was so deliberate that it, it had to be a coaching point. Cause there were reps where he's out there in like a real pass rushing stance, but there's a lot mm-hmm. of times where he's like on his like squatting back, like towards his ass with like both hands on the ground. Mm-hmm. And like, you just can't rush the passer from that perspective and i saw him in that like a third of his snap so that that to me was like you take him out of those you just throw out those reps and maybe the consistency comes a little bit better um i just i literally could not understand what that was all about um and the other thing is just like his combination of um quickness in his lower half he's got good length right like 30 like 34 inch arms his arms were longer than 34 yeah yeah was pretty good and they're stocky it's really like, it's strong really so like just when you think about how you shed blocks you need to have inside leverage you got to have strength to throw the guy and then you got to have quick feet to you know shuffle left or right so like he has this rare combo just like that individual trait like if he's in a one-on-one situation he's gonna throw you know if he's in a three tech like you probably can't really run his way as long as he's trying like you said so i just think he he has like by far I I grade out the block shedding for every player and he's got he grades out as an A for me which is like only guy that high so that's a big like just kind of you got to have an it factor to be like a first round player and I think he's kind of got that and I think the pass rushing can get there with a lot of this pass rush stance and I thought he got better as the year went on in that department um, so I compare him to Dalvin Tomlinson I just I think he's going to be a dominant three tech and a guy that can hold up as a nose yeah. Hey, he was number one on Bruce Feldman's freak list for a reason, you know, because a lot mm-hmm. of people believe in the highs of him. Yeah, I think he's an interesting one. I, I had to look where I had him. I had him 65th overall. I just want to see him be able to eat double teams. Consistently, yeah, I agree there. And I just thought he didn't. Um, but the tools are insane. So I'll close this thing out. And this one, I've been I had two players here and I could tell you both of them since nobody else is picking. I almost went with Emmanuel Forbes. Mm. Who I had a fi- I had a fifty nine, but I decided to go even deeper. I have Luke Musgrave at sixty nine, and man, this tight end class is so good, and I just don't get it. I d- I really don't, man. Like I, I'm at the point where I haven't finalized them, but Musgrave is my tight end five, and I think I really want to put Sam Laporta over him as tight end five. I really do. You I you should Musgrave. I don't think he can hold up on the line of scrimmage. I don't think he's a wildly dynamic pass catcher. I think he's fast and big. That doesn't mean he's an imposing threat as a pass catcher. And he wasn't healthy. So I'm trying to have figure out how somebody could talk me into, forget the first round talk, as a top 50 pick. As a, as a second round pick. I wouldn't take him in the second round. I don't. And this tight end class. You have Michael Mayer, Darnell Washington, Dalton Kincaid. I like Tucker Kraft. Better than him at a South Dakota State. I like I said, I'm probably gonna have Laporta over him when all is said and done. I just I don't know how or when we got here. I really don't. So, and, and maybe if he was healthy, he would have had this great season. But from all the tape that's out there, I've been able to watch. I don't know what screams that he's gonna be this imposing threat. Because uh, if you take a tight end in the first two rounds, like you're expecting him to be a top ten player at the position. I, that's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Look at all the tight ends in the NFL. I mean, and for Musgrave, Mm -hmm. I think he could run the seam as well as anyone, but that's, that's one ability. Yeah. So 
I'm just very surprised. The, this is so here. fun because Renner had him as a my guy. Oh, Renner, I, I know Renner. Renner, loves, yeah. Renner, yeah. Renner loves Muscat. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and my my comp for him is low end Kobe Fleener, high end Jimmy Graham. So it's just like that's a spectrum. <laughs> we're getting yeah. full spectrum between between this interview and, and Evan Renner. I I thought he was Jordan Cameron. Remember him? Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah, Cameron, he's gonna have one really good year. <laughs> and that was because Jordan Cameron had like significant concussion inju- injuries, yeah. if I remember right. But like big, long, insane tester in terms of straight line speed. But I don't know. I also like I'm a little different with tight ends. Like if you can't block, I'm not going to put you in the Hall of Fame right away. <laughs> like it's just like you got to be able to block because everybody the whole point is that you're versatile, that you can line up personnel packages that keep the defense off balance. Yeah which is why I love Mayer. I love Darnell. I like Kin- Kincaid's a special pass catcher, so that's different. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I can't get behind that one as a, a first two rounds kind of pick. I almost picked Forbes. I almost picked Emmanuel Forbes. But We pile on that one quite a bit. No, I know. And the thing is, that, like, there's a lot of people that I respect in this industry whose opinion I respect who like Forbes. And... The reason why I didn't pick him in this exercise is because before I'm done with corner rankings, before I'm done with my big board, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make sure that I watch yeah. a couple more games of Forbes because, I, again, anytime, if you surround yourself with people whose opinions you respect and they're all saying one thing, it's not it's not bad to be different. It's not bad to have like a differing opinion, but it does sometimes. I've, I've had this before where I've watched a prospect and I've talked to somebody and be like, no, 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 actually, like they actually do this. And I was like, all right, I don't really like him. And then I'll go back and I'll watch him and be like, all right, I see him in a different light now. So shoot, man. You want my Forbes sales pitch real quick? Sure, yes. So for me- Don't say interceptions. Do not no, say No, no, no. Don't no. say interceptions and don't say makeup speed. <laughs> no, it's better than that. Um, <laughs> for me, it's like, depending on what scheme you run, he could be a fifth round grade or a late first. Because to me, it has to be one of those Fangio defenses with the off quarters base fit where sure. he's not pressing. He's playing, you know, eight to 10 yards off to start. And when he's playing from there, number one, you're limiting his like the the size. Very, He's he's way less than a press corner going to be. I'd actually... screen him every time. Every <laughs> time. Every time. I'm not even kidding. I'd throw three screens at him on every yeah. job. Well, that's a big problem with those systems in, in general, too. Yeah. But um, And he actually has an attitude to tackle. He's just, again, yeah. one That's why you got you to have really good slot defenders to help out with that stuff, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Right? absolutely. Which I, I agree there. I, I'm not a fan of those systems in general. But um, playing off, he's got a one four eight ten 10-yard split. He's got, you know, the length he's... He had all of the ball production, I think, for a reason because he has some of that recovery speed. Mm-hmm. I think he can trigger when he's looking at the quarterback and knows where it's going. So if he's playing off almost like an extension of the safety unit in those quarters defenses, I think he can just be a ball hawking number two. Um, well, yeah, if you run press man, I'm not taking him in day two of the draft. No, 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 no. You can't. You can't yeah. do it. But almost like a big Darius Williams is kind of the okay. way I look at him. All right. Or even okay. even um Reed for the for the Jets. Oh, DJ Reed? Yeah. Yeah, Reed's so compact though. Yeah, he is. For like, sure. I, yeah, for sure. Like five nine outside corner. He's a like a unit. He is only five sense. nine. Yeah. God, yeah. He's a little bigger than that. It's he's just he's strong as hell, must pound for pound Damn. and jumps through the roof. Maybe Travis Hodges Tomlinson yeah. does have a chance. Five seven's a little different, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, was he? I do not like him. No, he's, he's actually five, my lowest. He's five eight. He's five eight. No, he's not. He's five eight. Five no, seven. No, the and NFL half. rounds up. I hate it. The, what do you mean they round up? They it's diabolical. A lot of people don't know this. They round up. What? Yeah, right? Don't yeah they don't they round up? I, I think I they could, do. I've got him at five seven and a half because that that's what he was at at the Senior Bowl. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if he was even at like five seven, you know six. They, I mean, if he stretched inches. to five eight, then. Hey, I like. I, I don't want this to be an anti Hodges Thompson. He's a good player. <laughs> no, he's no, a good no, player. No, no, no. I don't think no, he's playing on the play. outside like DJ Reed, though. Yeah, that's probably fair. It's probably fair. Five seven is different than uh, than five nine. It's tough. <laughs> what a world! All right, you guys, that was an absolute blast. I feel like people are gonna love that because we we hit on some guys that just do not get the love. 
um, or the hate that they, they clearly deserve <laughs> to be hated on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> thanks no, for thanks coming for on you guys you got you got anything you uh you want to plug before we get out of here uh follow all of connor's great work that he's doing over at nbc uh because nice, he's absolutely buddy. killing it um listen to the nfl stock exchange podcast after of course you listen to all of these great episodes that you have here on this wonderful channel um and then buy a pff subscription so you can read the pff draft guide and keep me and employed. use the mock drafts and i can room. keep paying my bills <laughs> thank you yes Trevor's lights just go out behind him. <laughs> you didn't buy the subscriptions. All right, you guys. Take care. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll see you for the next one. <laughs>